still know what I'm saying. I know this spirit. Give it on a constant electric charge. Electric charge. Why? It's hungry. It has to be fed constantly. Or it will reach out its magnetic arm and grab anything within its reach and kill it. It's monstrous to it. Monstrous. It grows bigger and bigger. How can it be stopped? I don't know. Other scientists will have to find a solution. My contribution is finished. I know this. In nuclear research, there's no place for lone wolves. Specially trained technicians from the State University prepared to receive the element being transported across the field under police guard. Every precaution was taken by the men who had accompanied the element on its long journey. But even then, we failed to realize the power of Denker's creation. The element was reaching out with invisible fingers, gripping metallic objects with terrifying strength. We had no time to consider the reason for Denker's experiment or what he had hoped to accomplish. Our main concern was to remove the element from the airfield as soon as we could. Working as quickly as possible, the technicians opened Denker's briefcase. Using non-magnetic tools, they carefully removed the cylinder containing the new element and transferred it to a case made of special alloys designed to prevent the spread of radioactive particles. The guards had not been required to wear protective clothing due to their brief exposure to the element, yet they shared our relief in the fact that the element was in a double container. For added protection, a special lead-lined truck had been provided to contain any stray radiation while the element was en route to its destination, the cyclotron at the State University. Banker was right. In nuclear research, there is no place for lone wolves. July 19th, Forbes and I had installed the element in its new home in the cyclotron at the State University. It was early morning by the time we'd been checked through radiation quarantine and had made our report to Dr.